What's up guys, Justin here with TheRealTimeEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out a city generation tool for Unity that allows you to quickly create cities inside of the program. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the Seascape city system um, can be downloaded from the Unity Asset Store. So this is something that comes from Ollie VR, and you can download this and bring it into Unity in order to basically create unique buildings inside of the program. So there's a lot of different features in here that we can take a look at, but for now, just know that this is uh, basically built to be optimized for performance inside of Unity. And so there's a lot here, so let's just go ahead and take a look at it. So first things first, we're gonna bring that into Unity. All right, so you can go in and inside of the package manager, you can find that package. So you can find that package inside of the package manager if you've purchased it through the store. Um, and you can just click on the download button. I need to bring it in separately just because, um, because of my internet speed, I have to go somewhere else for faster internet to bring these packages in. So I'm just gonna to go to assets, import package, custom package, and I'm just gonna import that. That's gonna take a minute to bring all that stuff in. So we're gonna let that work. All right, so now we've got all the assets in here. Well, now what you can do is you can just come over into your hierarchy, right click, and under Seascape, there's options for create mega city and mega city complex. We'll just bring in a mega city for right now. So we're gonna bring that in. And you can see how that just brings in kind of a volume with kind of a street like this. So nothing special right now, but you're also gonna notice when you select this, so under Seascape City, there's gonna be options on the right-hand side for things that you can do to build your city. And it tells you some things that are gonna help with your uh, visual appearance. So usually I'll just click on OK, and we'll just switch over to linear color space. And so most of the time, I'll just kind of follow the instructions over here on the right-hand side of the page. But if you scroll down, notice how there's options in here for lots of different things, right? So you can control the size of the city that you're going to be able to create, randomization settings, a lot of different stuff in here. And there's a lot to get into. I don't want this to be a super, super long video. I just want to kind of give an overview right now. But notice how there's options down here to start generating things inside of your city. So there's options for generating streets, light poles, bus stops, um, foliage a lot of different things in here. And you can either bring them in individually or you can just click the button to generate city, which is what we're gonna do. And so when we click the button to generate city, that's gonna randomly create the city using the settings that we have up above. So we're gonna let this work and then we'll come back and take a look at what it creates. All right, so now if we zoom out a little bit, so let's back up and take a look at what this has created overall. You can see how this has generated an entire city inside of Unity. So, and if you zoom in closer, you can see how there's a lot of detail for these individual buildings. So you've got like ins and outs and other things like that. You've got reflections coming off the glass. So um, it really looks good, especially considering all we had to do was click on a button. All right, so this has given us a pretty good city, but what we can do is we can come in here and we can select either the individual buildings first off. So what's cool about these is these are live, right? Meaning if I come in here and notice how when I select one of the buildings, I get options down in the building modifier script that I can change um, things like the shape of the facade, for example. So you can have like different images on here making the facade look different. So you can kind of adjust those. You, you can adjust the first level facade, um, the upper level facades, lots of different options in here to adjust those different things. So you can see how you can adjust those really quickly in order to get something that's really gonna look the way that you want it to look. So you can also adjust the height and the width subdivision, which is going to affect the way that the uh, different levels are subdivided. So notice how if I drag this all the way to the right, then I get very small openings. If I drag it to the left, then things change a little bit. So you can use that subdivision to kind of adjust the way that the building faces are going to be subdivided. And this is individual to each one of the buildings, right? So like for example, if I wanted this one to be different, I can click on this and just drag the options or drag the slider in order to get those different options in here. So in addition to being able to adjust kind of the building shape and the windows and all of that, you can also use these tools right here to adjust the size of the building. So notice how if I click and drag this, for example, I'm able to move this in and out. So I can really like dynamically adjust the individual buildings in here. So each one of these is gonna be completely adjustable based on where you drag these sliders to. So you can use that in order to create some different space. Notice how too, this is coming in and this is adding things like rooftop equipment as well. 
And notice how that adjusts as I adjust my building size, right? So as I adjust this out, I'm getting more stuff on top of the building. As I adjust it in, it's kind of like dynamically removing some of that stuff. You can also adjust the height of the building, number of floors right here. Or if you wanted to, you could also select this, go down to the floor number and just enter a value, right? So if I wanted this to be two floors, I could type in a value of two. If I wanted it to be 12 floors, you could type in a value of 12. So everything in here is designed to really quickly let you generate some very detailed buildings. So there's some interesting stuff in here having to do with like adjusting um, the blinds, for example. So you can adjust if the building in general has more blinds open or closed, as well as the window lights, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So notice how in addition to being able to customize the buildings, you can also customize things like the roads. So for example, if we click on this road, you can adjust the material ID of that road. Notice how when you do that, your road is gonna look different than it did before. So it's gonna put a different texture on there from the library of textures that are contained inside of this tool. So um, lots of different things that you can customize in here. So another thing you can do is if we go back up to our Seascape City, there's also the options in here to add like street light poles and other things like that. So if I click on light poles, for example, notice how that's gonna add those in along this street just with a single click. So if you did wanna add like bus stops or something, it's gonna add those in here as well. And then if we click on those, you can adjust things like the offset. So if I type in a value of 15, for example, in the X offset, notice how I'm gonna get more of these than if I type in a value of 20. So, because the spacing is gonna be a little bit wider. So all of this is going to allow us to really quickly customize our scene. And so one of the kind of ridiculously fun things about this is, um, for example, right now our scene is being lit by a directional light. Notice how the city references that directional light. Uh, it's gonna reference that, uh, I wanna say over here in the lights control right here. But if we were to go in and we were to adjust that directional light over here and we adjust the rotation. So if you adjust the rotation, so the rotation is kind of like up instead of down, right? So basically I think the assumption is if the rotation is above zero, then it assumes that this is nighttime and there's not gonna be any, um, any lighting coming from that directional light anymore. Notice how with this tool, what this is doing is this actually has like emissive lights and things that turn on at night um, when your lighting is turned down. So you can use this in order to quickly create light scenes. Notice how like the street lights, for example, these are emissive. And so those are gonna emit light as well. So it just gives you kind of this like ridiculously easy to adjust thing for your scenes where you can make nighttime or daytime. And uh, this actually, honestly, I think everything looks a little bit better at nighttime than it does during daytime inside of this, uh, inside of this scene. All right, so there's also a custom editor that you can open up that allows you to customize the diff these different buildings as well. I don't wanna to get too far into that in this video. If you're interested, we can talk about that in the future, but just overall, um, the tools contained inside this tool set are pretty cool. So I will link to that in the notes down below. So I will link to the Seascape City Generator in the notes down below, but leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this tool. If you've given it a try, I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that subscribe button for new Unity content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.